Hi, my name is Steve James, and this is the More Abundant Life Podcast, episode number 394. This is a reposting of the start of a series I did on giving and receiving. This is an important series to help Bible students to understand the principles of giving and receiving. The Bible teaches how to tap into the resources of the more abundant life. Christians should be prosperous. The series starts off with the heart of giving, then we'll get into the background of it through the Old Testament all the way up into what's available for us today. I'm making the first segment available on this podcast. The rest of the sessions of the series are on my website. The series concentrates on giving and receiving, but I will spend time on the study of tithing, offerings, giving and receiving, cheerful giving, the proper utilization of finances, and we're going to go to God's Word and let God's Word speak for itself. To start off with, we're going to get into the heart of giving. All righty, well, God bless you all in the wonderful name of our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I'd like to welcome you to the first session of a biblical study series I'm doing on giving and receiving. And I'm going to focus on the giving and receiving, but I will spend some time in this series on the study of tithing, offerings, cheerful giving, and the proper utilization of finances. We're going to go to God's Word and let God's Word speak for itself. To start off with, we're going to get into the heart of giving. When looking at the Old Testament leaders and believers, you can see that when the people gave with a willing heart, the temple, the Levites, and the priests had great abundance. Consequently, the people and the nations were prosperous and protected from all their enemies. When the Old Testament believers had the right heart, their only reason for their existence was a life with the one true God, and all their focus revolved around God. We will learn more in this series about the right heart as we go through the Old Testament and looking at tithing and offerings. We will also see the right heart as we go through the Gospels and Jesus Christ's life, the book of Acts and the church epistles and the rest of the writings of the New Testament. In the New Testament, God has revealed in his word the right doctrine and practice for honoring him with one substance. In the church epistles, we will be enlightened as we diligently go to God's word and see the understanding of how to build and care for the true temple of God, which is the body of Christ, so that the church of God may move dynamically towards God's attended desire of having all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth, that God's people will prosper. The gift ministries will have an abundance to lead the church of God. The true temple of God will be built up and grow mightily as each member in that body of Christ reaches out to the world so that all men may be saved and come to an accurate knowledge 
of the truth, which is God's word. Now to get started, let's go to First Chronicles. In God's word, it's uh, First and Second Samuel, First and Second Kings, First and Second Chronicles, and in First Chronicles chapter twenty-nine, which is the last chapter in First Chronicles. We're going to start right in verse 1 and read this record and get the learning that's available for us right here. And in verse 1 it says, Furthermore, David the king said unto all the congregation, Solomon my son, whom alone God has chosen, is yet young and tender. And the work is great, but... Uh, the work is great, for the palace is not for man, but for the Lord Jehovah God. See, David is saying that Solomon's son, he was called of God alone to do this, to be ahead of this project. But he is yet young and tender, and the work is great. He's going to need help. But be this understood, this work is not for man but for the Lord God. This is who the work is for. Verse 2, Now I have prepared with all my might for the house of my God the gold for the things to be made of gold, and the silver for the things of silver, and the brass for the things of brass, and the iron for the things of iron, and the wood for the things of wood, onyx stones, and stones to be set, glittering stones, and of divers colors, and all manner of precious stones, and marble stones in abundance. Moreover, because I have set my affection to the house of my God, I have of my own proper good of gold and silver, which I have given to the house of my God, over and above all that I have prepared for the holy house. David is saying, King David is saying, I have given of my own self all this stuff, the gold, the silver, the precious stones I have given over and above. Verse 4, even 3,000 talents of gold, of the gold of uh, Oprah, and 7,000 talents of refined silver to, the, to overlay the walls of the house with all. All this stuff here came to billions, not millions, billions of dollars that David gave of himself first and foremost. Verse 5, the gold for the things of gold and the silver for the things of silver and for all manner of work to be made by the hand of the artifactors. And who then is willing to consecrate his service this day unto the Lord Jehovah? Who is willing? This is the question in this whole chapter. Who is willing? David said, I was willing. He's asking here, who is willing? Then the chief of the fathers and the princesses of the tribes of Israel and the captains of thousands and of hundreds with the rulers of the king's work offered willingly and gave for the service of the house of God of gold 5,000 talents and 10,000 drams, and of silver 10,000 talents, and of brass 18,000 talents, and 100,000 talents of iron. The people started giving a lot, huh? And they, with whom prepared stones were found, gave them to the treasury of the house of the Lord Jehovah by the hand of Jehu the Gershonite. 
Then the people rejoiced, for they offered willingly. The people rejoiced, for they offered willingly. Because with perfect hearts, they offered willingly. They offered willingly with perfect hearts to the Lord Jehovah. And David the king also rejoiced with great joy. David was blessed when he saw that the people gave. It was just a wonderful time. Verse 10, Therefore David blessed the Lord Jehovah before all the congregation. And David said, Blessed be Lord Jehovah, God of Israel, our fathers forever and ever. Thine, O Lord Jehovah, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty for all that is in heaven and in the earth is thine is the kingdom O Lord Jehovah and thou art exalted as head above all man David is saying God is the one that puts all this together He is the greatness, the power, the glory, the victory, the majesty, and all that is in the earth and all that is in the heavens is thine. And God is exalted. He is head above all. Verse 12, both riches and honor come of thee. All the riches, honors, they all come from thee, God. And thou reignest above all and in thy hand is power and might and in thy hand it is to me is to make great and to give strength unto all now therefore our god we thank thee and praise thy glorious name but who am i and what is my people that we should be able to offer so willingly see the willingness there after this sword for all things come of thee and of thine own have we given thee see in uh, in psalms 24 verse 1 it says the earth is the lord's and the fruitness the fullness thereof the fullness thereof See, these people realize that everything they got was because of God. God is above all. The power, the majesty, all those things that we've been reading about is God. And God was the one that gave them the ability to get anything. And so they offered willingly, knowing that God was that great God. Verse 15, now we are strangers before thee and sojourners as were all our fathers our days on the earth are as a shadow and there is none abiding in other words no one's going to live forever but while we're here we're going to do our best for our for his highest verse 16 O lord jehovah our god all this store that we have prepared to build thee a house and house for thine holy name cometh thy thine hand and is all thine own. Everything we're given is yours anyhow, God. And they knew that. I know also, my God, that thou triest the heart, triest the heart and has pleasure in uprightness. As for me, in my in, it, as for me in the uprightness of mine heart I have willingly offered all these things and now have I seen with joy thy people which are present here to offer willingly unto thee David saying I offered willingly and now I see that the people offered willingly that's the heart of giving knowing that god owns everything anyhow and we just give so that god can get what he needs done okay and at this time at the old 
Testament right here we're reading in Chronicles it was to build the temple to build it and they're getting ready to do this in verse 18 it says O Lord Jehovah God of Abraham Isaac and of Israel our father keep this forever in thy imaginations and of the thoughts of thine heart of thy people and prepare their hearts unto thee you know something when David was uh, getting ready to be king when uh, Samuel was looking for the second king of Israel God said don't look on the outward appearance but look on the heart and here was the heart of David you know and then David uh, was able to communicate and share that heart with the people of God and they had a willing heart for God their life was revolved around God and his word and they knew their abundance and their uh, life being blessed was all because of God so they were willing to offer freely for the work of God which is wonderful verse 19 and give unto Solomon my son a perfect heart we want Solomon to have a perfect heart too to keep thy commandments thy testimonies and thy statutes and to do all these things and to build the palace for the which I have made provisions and David said unto all the congregation, Now bless the Lord Jehovah the, your God. And all the congregation blessed the Lord Jehovah God of their fathers and bowed down their heads and worshiped the Lord Jehovah and the king. And they were blessed. Pretty neat. I'd like right now to go to the New Testament, to the church epistles, and look at the new temple, okay? So let's go to Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 2, and we're going to start in verse 12 and read the context here, but it's pretty neat, and it says in verse 12 of chapter 2 of Ephesians, now at that time ye were without God. This is talking about the Gentiles. At one time they didn't have God. God was for Israel, right? But at that time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenant of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. The people of Israel were blessed. They had God. They knew that God was the powerful God, the head. And everything in the earth and the heavens was of God. And their abundance came from God. Now the Gentiles are going to be part of the new covenant, the new body of Christ. Let's read it. Verse 13, but now in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were afar off or made nigh by the blood of Christ, for he is our peace who hath made both one, Jew and Gentile one, and hath broken down the middle wall of petition between us. In Israel, at the time of Jesus Christ, there was a literal wall that separated the Jews from the Gentiles. But that wall has been abolished, as we're going to see here. And having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, for to make in himself of twain, of two, one new man, so, so make in peace and that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby. 
verse 17, and came and preached peace unto you that were afar off, the Gentiles, right? And to them that were nigh, were closer, Israel. For, for through him we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. Now everyone has uh, access to the Father, which is God, by the spirit they receive when they get born again. Now, verse 19, Now therefore ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. Everyone that believes in what Jesus Christ accomplished for them gets born again and is part of the household of God. Man, we should be so thankful to be part of that household of God. Verse 20, and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Jesus Christ himself being the chief corner, the chief corner in whom all the building fitly framed together into a holy, groweth into a holy temple in the Lord. All the believers are now part of the temple of God. Each of them fitly framed together, groweth into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom ye also are built together for a habitation of God. God now dwells within all the believers individually, and together we are the, as it says here, we're the family of God, we're the household of God. We are fellow citizens with the saints. We are the household of God. And we're a habitation of God through the Spirit when we get born again, when we receive that Holy Spirit. And God's intense desire is written in First Timothy. Let's go there. First Timothy chapter 2. And we're going to read this little section here. And in verse 3 it says, For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who will have all men to be saved. How many men? God's will, God's desire is that all men will be saved and to come unto a knowledge of the truth. This is what the believers today are building. We're building the new temple of God, which is the believers, or which is the people of the world. All people need to hear that word of God and come unto an accurate knowledge of the truth. That is our desire. The new temple of believers, God's desire, and it should be our desire also. When it's our desire, then we will have that willing heart. We will offer willingly to see the word of God move, to see that the ministers have what they need to move God's word. It will be our way of helping the word get out, helping to build that temple of God. And as we get into this series, we're going to see people with the heart of God in the Old Testament. And we're going to see how they handle their finances. And we will learn keys on how we can handle our finances too. And we will see this in the book of Acts. We'll see what Jesus Christ said about tithing and giving. We will see what the Apostle Paul said and did in the book of Acts and in the church epistles. And there's other writings within the New Testament that we will get information as how to do this giving and receiving so that the church can have what it needs to move dynamically in this day and time. And as a result of that, the believers will be prosperous and have a way to fight their enemies. And we're going to learn about it in this series. So I'm excited and I can't wait to get into more of this and to share it with you. But for now, just look at that heart of service, that heart of giving, so that God can move the word. The people 
who are out there with gift ministries can do their function. Well, God bless you. You have a wonderful week, and I'll be back in two weeks because I'm going to a family camp next week. But after that, we will continue week after week until we finish this series on giving and receiving. God bless. There is a syllabus available through Amazon.com to help you follow along with the live audio teachings. Giving and Receiving There is a bonus series available both on the audio and as part of the Giving and Receiving syllabus. The bonus series is called Plus All Sufficiency in Everything. Both the paperback and the ebooks can be purchased and are being distributed around the world through Amazon.com. In the show notes below, there is a link to get the description and to purchase the syllabus. It is also available on my website on the Biblical Studies Books page.